Coming up on DITV News, new Iowa City businesses from new faces. Also, we get the inside tips on how students can protect themselves at night. We'll tell you everything you need to know about the Cyhawk game. And stick around for our predictions. What will the weather look like for this week's game? Find out more in this week's weather. All that more coming up on this Friday morning edition of DITV. Don't go anywhere. DITV News starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Susanna Kloster. And I'm Sydney Zatz. The Iowa City Downtown District has many locally owned businesses. What you might not know is that several of them are owned by women. In August, two female business owners joined together under one roof at the newest additions to Downtown Iowa City. The two businesses are Lux Interior Design Store owned by Jang Finlayson, excuse me, and White Ivy Events, a wedding planning business owned by Amanda Burrell. Burrell is a new graduate from the University of Iowa who planned to move to a larger city to open her business, but decided to stay in Iowa City when she realized there are not that many local wedding planning options. For more info on these businesswomen, check out the article written by Andrew Mitchell at daily-iowan.com. From startup to storefront, one group of students on campus are making their dream a reality. DITV News reporter Noah Gowdy met up with the group to find out more about their new business. What started in the business school known as the Founders Club is now bringing students the opportunity to learn and experience what it is like to be a young entrepreneur. So the city of Coralville, um, Indiana Trumbull, who kind of is, is leading the Iowa River Landing Project, they came to the Founders Club at Iowa with the idea of doing a store with students. That idea eventually led to them securing a new storefront at the Iowa River Landing of Coralville a store they have coined as the Foundry IRL, which will host eight student-run businesses once they open. So there's two primarily interior design, product design. There's three that are more apparel design, so fashion and clothing. Um, there's two that are more accessories, so body accessory, headbands and bracelets, and there's some uh, phone repair services. Those eight businesses are going to be focusing on some key fundamentals when it comes to gaining that experience in the store. You know, selling in a store is totally different from selling online. You really have to focus on the shopping experience. The students are taking that experience into their own hands and creating something they feel will leave a lasting impact. What we're going for here is um, kind of a higher end feel, almost like a gallery where it really emphasizes a lot of like focus on the products. The store is set to open later this month for all the community to go and see. Reporting from the Iowa River Landing in Coralville, Iowa, Noah Gowdy, DITV News. Susanna is not looking like a promising weekend for the Beat State game. I know it's been really dreary. Our weather anchor Jahisha is from London, and I'm sure she's quite used to this weather by now. Yeah, and you spent six or uh, this summer in London, so I yeah. know you're kind of used to it, but <laughs> I can't say I am. So let's toss it over to Jahisha to find out what this weekend's forecast is going to be like. Yes, my hometown may look like this quite often, but it looks like I came back to America just in time, as it is the last day of rain for a while at least, as today we will be seeing in 17 degrees during the day and then we'll see rain at 56 degrees tonight. Then looking at our extended forecast, it's great to see I get to bring the sunshine back just in time for the game, as Saturday may start off partly cloudy at 72 degrees, but the rain holds off for that hopeful win as we tail into the evening at 54 degrees. Closing out the weekend on Sunday, we get to see that big beautiful sun at 73 degrees before lowering to a pleasant 51 degrees into the evening. Then to kick off the week, we get to wake up to that glorious sunshine to brighten up those Monday glooms as we start the day with 75 degrees before leading into 54 degrees at night. Tuesday gets even better as we embark upon those tan rays at 78 degrees before leaving us with a lovely 57 degrees in the evening. Then finally Wednesday just tops the forecast with that relaxing warm weather at 79 degrees before leaving us with a glorious 59 degrees into the evening. So the school year may have started off a little wet and glum, but I'm glad I get to bring you those illustrious waves that make our school days just a little bit better. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Good luck to our Hawkeyes and back to you at the desk. Catlett Residence Hall has claimed the gold for an eco-friendly building. 
This summer, the Residence Hall earned the Leadership in Energy Environmental Design Program's Gold Certification. The LEED certification nationally recognizes benchmark developed by the U.S. Green Building Council. To receive the award, 25% of installed materials have a high recycle content, and 33% of materials are harvested, extract, extracted, or manufactured within a 500-mile radius of the job site. Including Catlett, there are now 16 LEED facilities on campus, 2 platinum, 11 gold, and 3 silver. For more information, Information, be sure to check out more at dailyoniowan.com. With many students still unsure about, the, about what the university is doing to make the campus safer and how to protect themselves, DITV reporter Kennedy Cook got an inside look on what the Department of Public Safety is doing to keep students safe and their tips for self-defense. Ensuring your safety at a large institution such as the University of Iowa is a major component to feeling comfortable at your home away from home. But how exactly does one go about doing so, especially with crime on the rise in the surrounding communities? It becomes an important topic to discuss, especially when self-defense mechanisms such as tasers and pepper spray are not allowed. University of Iowa student J.C. Carr voices her concerns with this protocol. By it because how else are we going to defend ourselves um, in tough situations? I think campus should definitely um, reconsider that. Well, J.C., I had the opportunity to visit the Department of Public Safety here on campus and speak with Security Supervisor Bo Hartsock, who provided me with various campus amenities to ensure one's safety. Well, we have uh, first off the night ride service. Um, there's two different versions of that, the, tra the traditional service and the night ride express service, which uh, costs a dollar. It's cashless. It goes uh, directly to your U-bill. Um, we also have uh, a couple, uh, an app called Rave Guardian app. Once Bo finished informing me on the resources for students' safety, he provided me with a few important tips to combat with the band of self-defense tools. Wear their surroundings at night. Um, you know, don't wear headphones. Be aware of your surroundings. Um, and stay in well-lit areas. Reporting from the Department of Public Safety, this is Kennedy Cook, DITV News. Sorry about those technical difficulties. So Zanga, it's Friday, and that means we're going to profile this week's Kid Captain. In the newsroom, we have Daily Island reporter Charlie Peckman with all the news. Charlie? Thank you very much, Sydney. This week's Kid Captain for the Iowa versus Iowa State game is Harper Stribe, who is six years old and from Polk City, Iowa. One day while playing outside in May of 2017, Harper's parents discovered that she had swelling in her cheek. After visiting a pediatrician and an ear, nose, and throat specialist, she arrived at the UI Stead Family Children's Hospital, where doctors determined that she had a cancerous tumor that affects skeletal muscles. Harper then underwent a 45-week treatment that included radiation and chemotherapy. Even though this process was difficult on the family, Harper's mother, Nicole, said that she stayed strong throughout the process and enjoyed the various amenities that were offered by the hospital, including therapy dogs and visits from the Dance Marathon students. In addition to being this week's kid captain, Harper also participated in this year's Kids Day at Kinnick Stadium on August 11th. She said some of her favorite memories from the day included meeting the players and getting a tour of the field. In addition to being the kid captain and participating in Kids Day, Harper also has a connection to another one of the kid captains for this year, Gabe Graber, who is the postseason kid captain. Both Gabe's dad and Harper's dad were roommates in college. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Charlie. And if you haven't heard already, it's my favorite weekend of the entire year. It's the Iowa-Iowa State Week. It's pretty hard to not hear that it is that weekend. <laughs> and to tell us more, we have Bo and Lucy in the sports studio to give us all the updates on how the Hawkeyes are going to beat the Cyclones. Hello and welcome to this special Cyhawk edition of DITV's pregame show. I'm your host, Bo Bowman. And I'm Lucy Rodine. Well, it is state week. All over campus you can see students in their Beat State t-shirts, making side clown jokes, and talking trash to their friends over in Ames. Yes, it's Iowa's biggest rival by far, and there's obviously a trophy on the line. 
But during state week, however, Iowa coaches took the trophy out of its display case and hid it away in a closet to try to send a message to the team. And that ma message is that the team can't play like they're defending the trophy, but rather than it's up for grabs. Now this rivalry definitely adds some fuel to the fire in this game, but not only in-state Hawkeyes are fired up about it. Uh, just seeing how passionate my teammates are about it, seeing how passionate the coaches are, uh, everybody that um, you know from Iowa that, that has a lot of history with with this uh, with this rivalry game, uh, you know, just really seeing the passion and emotion that they put into it, and uh, you know, seeing how how the, or excuse me, the, the raw emotions after the game, uh, you know, one way or the other, is really what makes it worth it. Well, you know, it's a fun game to be a part of. It's a Big rivalry, in-state game, trophy game, so it's a little added bonus. But uh, you know, at the same time, that doesn't change anything about our preparation, about how we're going about our business, and uh, should be a fun environment to play on Saturday. You know, trophy games, we place a high significance on. You know, we want to, um, you know, dominate those games. So this is the first one of the year, and we're looking forward to take, you know, trying to take care of business. But Iowa is at a slight disadvantage in this one because they don't have any film to study since Iowa State's game was rained out last week. That's right, and we heard a mixed reaction from Iowa players about this at Tuesday availability. Some of them said they'd rather have that game under their belt, but others said that maybe they're get, Iowa State's going to come in fresher now, now that they didn't have a week one game. Let's take a look. It's kind of like a week one opponent, so we kind of treating it like we did uh, Northern Illinois, watching some of their stuff last year, what they did to us last year that was successful that they might go back to. So it's just understanding what, what they're trying to get at. For us, I think we think it's positive that we got out there and we got to play a game and, and went through some adversity and, and tried to battle back from ups and downs. Um, and for them, you know, they might think they're a little fresher and, and things like that. So I think it's, you know, to each his own. And it's actually a little bit ironic. Usually they sound that uh, storm siren before the Cyclones come out of the game, but last week they had to do it to evacuate Jack Trice. I'm not really sure they know what's going on with that. Um, are they afraid of a little rain? I, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, all right, enough fooling around. Let's get into it. Lucy, what is Iowa's defense going to need to do to stop that high-scoring Iowa State defense? Well, or they, offense, excuse me. They're really going to have to contain Iowa State's running back, David Montgomery. He's a potential All-American, and Iowa's defense is definitely dialed in on him. Good, strong back, elusive. He puts his shoulder down. I mean, he's kind of like Saquon Barkley, but I mean, he can bring it too. Why is he so hard to tap? It seems like, you know, the first couple of guys just kind of bounce off him or, or he just makes it. Good. He has low center of gravity. I mean, he keeps his chest down, toes, uh, chest over his toes, and just keeps his feet moving. And then on the defensive side of the ball, the Cyclones have gotten even better since last year. What they're going to do is mess around with that extremely versatile uh, defensive line. They're, sometimes they're going to show um, two DNs, two down linemen set, and then sometimes they're going to show a uh, 33 set where there's three down linemen and then three linebackers either dropping into coverage or blitzing, obviously. So not having enough film on the Cyclones is really going to be tough for the Hawkeye offense, and it may come back and haunt that haunt them in that aspect of it. We'll have to see how they react to the different sets that they throw out there. So now for the favorite part of the show, predictions. Um, Lucy, you go first. Well, I, I am in agreement with the Iowa players who feel better having a game come into mm -hmm. it. I mean, I think that just having that one-week experience, especially kind of getting to figure out the kinks against Northern Illinois, I think Iowa's coming in with a leg up. And I know Iowa State's looking better than they have in previous years, but I'm going to take the Hawkeyes in this one by 10. I agree with you. Um, it's I think it's definitely an advantage for Iowa, especially we're always a team where that first game, at least in that first half, we've got those uh, pregame jitters. And I think it's good that we got those out of the way. And now we, uh, Iowa can go out and play Iowa football. Um, I, I'm not, I, I won't speak for the Cyclones, obviously. But, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think 10 points is fair. I'll go with Iowa, though. I, I won't put a number on it, but I'll go Iowa. And that's it for this us in this Cyhawk edition of pregame. Come back on Monday to see more. Guys, back to you. That's it for our Friday morning edition of DITV News. Be sure to come back on Monday where we'll be live Monday through Friday at 8.30 a.m. I'm Sydney Zatz. And I'm Susanna Kloster.